All right, Psalm 8. Psalm number 8. Last week we were talking about a, a slandered saint. David was talking about that. And we saw his prayer for a slandered saint. And today we're going to, he, he kind of moves a different direction and goes into a psalm of praise. A psalm of praise tonight in chapter, in psalm, not chapter, but in Psalm 8. We're going to read verse, it's only nine verses. This is going to go fairly quickly. There's uh, some things here we're going to point out and we're going to discuss. But Psalm 8, verse 1, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set the glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, thou hast, er, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of, the, of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, once again, I would ask that you would empty me of myself, Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Ghost, Father, that I may preach. Thus saith the word of the Lord from Psalm 8. Lord, tonight as we discuss this psalm of praise, Lord, I ask that you would help us, Lord, to get out of your word, Lord, uh, some help, some encouragement tonight. Lord, may the Holy Spirit be able to do his work in the hearts and the lives of those that are here. Lord, I ask you to do these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. All right, and so... As we look at this Psalm 8, I have just a, a few things written down here about this psalm. Uh, in, in verse 1 and verse 9, he repeats, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. Verse 1, he continues, in all the earth, uh, uh, who, has set the, who has set thy glory above the heavens. And so... One thing we ought to be, uh, look here and see is we notice that he talked about last week how God is a personal God. If we look at Psalm 7, verse 1, he says, O oh Lord, my God. We talked last week how God is a personable God. He's personal to you and I. Well, in Psalm 8, in the 8th Psalm, in verse 1, he goes, O oh Lord, our Lord. And so... He, he's, not, he's not just saying, God, you're, you're my God, but he's saying our. He's talking about the congregation of Israel. Uh, you know, he's talking about the whole nation. And uh, when he mentions that, uh, talking about praising God, O oh, oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And you see there's an exclamation part, uh, point right there, right? An exclamation mark saying that the name of the Lord is exciting. God should be exciting to us, right? I mean, uh, I don't, it doesn't matter whether uh, what's going on. Uh, when we get together to praise the Lord, or if there's preaching going on, or if we're uh, just whatever, ha whatever we're doing uh, that brings the Lord in, it ought to be exciting. It ought to be exciting. You say, well, uh, listen, it's Wednesday night and I'm tired. We're, you know, the kids are doing this and work's doing that. I, I get that, but we should be able to come in here and still be excited when we're together. We are this local family together, and 
We Listen, we are to praise God together. Yes, we can praise God and worship God separately uh, whenever, but when we come together, we ought to be able to praise God together. And this is what he's talking about here in verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set thy glory in the heavens. Listen, God, he's a personable God, yes, but we as his people should praise him together as David here is praising him. Now listen, I understand, especially over the last couple of years, that you may not, people may not be able to make it to church. I get that. I've even advertised, if you can't make it, join us on live stream. And there are some people, I get they can't. Maybe their doctor's order says, listen, you, you need to minimize your, uh, your, yourself outside of your house. I, I get that. Don't, don't, when, I, when I preach about live stream or about being in church, don't misunderstand. I know there are valid reasons where you, when you cannot come to church. But I also know uh, there are not valid excuses of to stay home. Listen, you can't, I mean, listen, yes, I understand you can sing these songs we're singing at home on your couch or on the desk or wherever it is or on your phone. You can sing those songs, but it is different when you're together. The, you, you don't have the atmosphere of that local church looking at a screen. I Listen, all the meetings that I've watched, live stream preaching meetings, I could get, yes, I could get something out of the message. But I tell you, I would rather be there in person than watching on a screen. Not just because the Holy Spirit, I'm not saying the Holy Spirit can't work through a screen, through watching that. Yes, the Holy Spirit can work on my heart through the preaching of the message. But to think what else I could get from being in that meeting being able to praise God with my fellow brothers and sisters, <coughs> not just with the local church, but listen, this is our church. We ought to be able to come together and praise God together, and that does mean singing. There's not a reason. There's you, No believer has a valid reason not to sing. I've heard, I, I've heard it. Well, I just don't like to sing. Listen, if you don't like to sing, you can't. You got a heart issue. If you can't sing, listen, I understand you may not like regular music and can't sing and uh, you don't sing regular music. Maybe say, I just listen to classical or this. I, you should be able to sing and praise God. There is no valid excuse why you cannot do that other than. You have you are backslidden in your heart, and you are in you don't want to praise God. But we as together should be able to come together. Doesn't matter if it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and be able to praise God. Doesn't, listen, doesn't matter what's going on outside these walls. Listen, even if we are not in these walls, something were to happen and we're not able to meet here in this building on this property, but we're, where we do meet, we should still be able to praise God as a local church. And so, oh Lord, our Lord, you know, he has capital uh, L-O-R-D at the beginning, oh Lord, talking about God the Father, and he says, our Lord, Capital L, little, lowercase already, then he's talking about Jesus. You know, how excellent is his name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Listen, how excellent is his name. God's name is above all names. For there is no name given amongst men whereby we must be what? Saved. You know, uh, that's what uh, Acts 4 tells us. Listen, there is no greater name. In heaven or on earth or anything or beneath the earth that is greater than the Lord's name. And I want to say this. His name better not be coming out of your mouth with anything negative or, uh, 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 or any kind of bad connotation with it. Listen, I, I'm sick and tired of seeing believers text on Facebook or back text, in text messages, OMG. No, 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 that's not how we as believers refer to God. 
We, that is not to be in our vocabulary. We say, well, what if they're saying, oh, my goodness. Well, most people, when they read OMG, that's not what they're, that's not what they're thinking. No. No. When, when, when the Lord's name comes out of our mouth, it ought to be with reverence. What's sad is we have a lot of believers who will give more reverence to other names than they will the Lord himself in his own name. I'm speaking to you, TBN. I mean, there, I mean we've got so-called, and I'm going to put this, preachers that will give reverence to uh, other people's name and other things more than they will Jesus' name more than God's name. In verse 2 he says, Out of the, the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. The, you know, God has shown himself in such a way that little kids can know him. Jesus says, suffer not the little children. God, God has, has shown himself in such a way that, I mean, you don't have to have a degree to know God. You don't. I mean, there are more, I, I said, I have known some lay people in the church who have a more of a, a, a exciting relationship, a more dynamic relationship with God than I've seen pre some preachers. Listen, God, 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 has, there's, God has made it so easy for us to know him. Especially those, listen, those of us who read, who can read his word, that just means we get to know him just a little bit better. Kids, you know, little kids may not know everything, but they can know God. I mean, that's why Jesus talks about having our faith as, as little children. That's the kind of faith we need to have. Children just trust him. They can trust him. That's why they go to him in prayer and, ask, and beg God and, and, and pray to God and to, and to see what God can do. And so listen, we, we are to enter together to praise him. Number two, the universe declares God's glory. The universe does. Look at verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man? David's saying, listen, as I look up and I'm considering the universe, the stars, the moons, the, the heavens, talking about the firmament, how wonderful that is. Because remember, David, David has, could not see what we can see. And listen, David didn't have that big old telescope or the satellites that we have that we could bounce everything off and see deeper and deeper and deeper into the universe. David just what he could see with his eyes said, I, I'm looking up and how wonderful and grand that is. What am I? Can you see David? Can you see in the pages of the black and white? Can you see David's worship to God? What am I compared to everything you have created? That is, humi that is humility, worship to God, considering how low he is, how grand God is in everything that he's made. As I consider what all you've made, what is man that you even consider me? Think about that. Uh, uh, listen, God's got to get everything in order. Right? All the intricacies of the, the stars the, and the planets and everything that's going on. Listen, David's like, what is man? That thou, that you're mindful that, listen, he, he goes, I'll look, 
up at all these things and I what been in how you're thinking of me. Remember, we are still the apple of God's eye. Even though he's created this universe, and it is spectacular what we see. I mean, I went on to, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went on the NASA website to see what I could see on the thing. And, man, the, 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 the colors, the beauty of all the universes, it's just, I couldn't believe it, but yet God still thinks and is mindful of me. Somebody who is nothing, as one preacher said, not worth but a nickel's worth of dirt. He still thinks of me. He is mindful of me. And then David, he continues. He has us on his mind. David continues. For thou hast made him, talking about the Son of Man, right, has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. You see, when Jesus came to this earth, he was made a little lower than the angels. What, do I, what does that mean? It means that when he took on flesh, he could taste death. Angels cannot. He goes, you, you made him, a, you know, he's a little, he was made a little lower than man. He's, he put on, God put on flesh. And listen, that, we know that that flesh died. We just celebrated a day commemorating the, of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? He goes, but yet, even though he was made a little lower than man on this earth, you've given him glory and honor. And he rules over everything. All the sheep, all the oxen, all the fish in the sea and everything that goes through it. Listen, I think that we as believers, we need to take a page out of David's life. Looking at, listen, there's a lot of these psalms that are this way. Praising, praising, worshiping God. But in the busyness of, time, uh, of our lives, working, kids, school, life, having to, I mean, I know we've been up in taxes all, all, you know, the last couple of months, getting everybody's, ta- we're all getting our taxes all done, and we have all this stress of everything going on. We could just take this page out of David's life and with everything that's going on, God, you still thinking of me. Jesus, you he tasted death just like I can, like I'm going to. And yet he still rules over everything. I mean, we saw this when he calmed the storms, when he was sleeping in the boat and Everybody thought they were going to die, and he comes out and calms the storms. As his church, as his as his children, if you're saved, that is, as his children. Even the, in all the chaos. Because remember the psalm before, there was chaos. He was praying of somebody who had slandered him. In all of our chaos, can you say, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name? Can you, can you slow down enough to just say how good God is? Hey, 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 hey. he deserves our praise. He created us. He created this world. He deserves all the praise, all the credit.
How excellent is his name. And all these things he still thinks of you and I. Apple of his eye. With everything going on in our life. Surely we can pull this page out and say, God, Lord, you, your name is excellent. And can't we be excited about it? Be excited about who God is and what he's doing. You might say, well, but Mark, I just, there's nothing really exciting in my life right now. I just, I, I'm really overburdened with all these things. Well, if you go to God you, and you're going to him in prayer and you give those burdens over to him, because that's what he wants. He wants you to give those burdens to him. He wants to swap your burdens for his burdens. And when you swap them, when you lay them over, then you are able to say how excellent is your name. Because his burdens become light. He's a burden bearer, folks. He took the burden of the entire world from the sense from the creation until the end upon himself on that cross. He put that whole thing on him. I'm sure he can handle whatever things we're going through. Now I'm not saying what you're going through is peddly. I'm not saying what you're going through is small. But if you'll go to him. See, that's the problem. We don't go to him. We'll put that knapsack right over our shoulders. We'll put that like a sack of potatoes, and it just and we'll just keep carrying it and carrying it and carrying it until we, we fall to the floor. And we'll say, you know what? I'm just done with all this stuff. And you won't darken the church for a very long time. Because you thought that Jesus was supposed to help you, but yet you would not give him your burden so he can help you. He's not going to just shove you. Say, I, he's not going to be the macho man and put him up, put shove it and say, and shove you out. No, he's going to say, he's going to have his hands out. Give it to me. But you've got to give it to him. If you don't, you won't be able to say how excellent his name is in all of the earth. You probably wouldn't even be able to look up as David did and see all the wonders and think, and all of this, I'm still on your mind. Why? Because what you have your mind on is your burden. Now, I'm not saying we're not to think about things. We're not to, we, we need to make good and wise decisions. I'm not saying we, we don't need to be doing those things. What I'm saying is this. When those burdens get heavy, you need to give it up. Lay aside those things that so easily beset you. That's what Paul said, right? Why? So we could run the race. Every weight and sin that will all easily beset us. Give all that to him and look up and say, How excellent is your name in all the earth. And praise him for who he is. If you do that, I want to tell you, it will be easier to pillow your head at night. To knowing he's got it handled. He's got it handled. All we have to do is play a small part. Father, as we conclude tonight, how excellent is your name. Lord, it's wonderful, it's marvelous. Lord, as we close tonight, uh, 
want to thank you for wanting to take our burdens. Father, I pray we as your children would give them up to you, that we'd give them over. Lord, that we wouldn't hold on to them. Lord, it's hard to see the tree for the forest. It's sometimes in the when we're in the middle of it, we want to keep a hold and uh, what's going on, we can't see how good you really are, how wonderful you really are, and how your mind is on us. Lord, I pray that whatever we're going through, or that we would hand those burdens over, we'd be able to look up and and say how excellent is your name throughout all, all the earth, be able to worship and praise you, Lord, as we ought to and we should. So, Lord, I pray that whatever's going on in the lives of those that are here tonight, Lord, that you've spoken to your people, Lord, and also that your people would respond. Lord, I ask you to do these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's